Hello and welcome to this week's first devotion taken from Mark chapter 8, reading verses 13 through 21. It's good to be back. Um, Good to be back sharing God's word with you and sharing the wonderful promises that he has given to us through his word. Mark 8 reads, After he left them and got back into the boat, he crossed to the other side. They had forgotten to take bread along except for one loaf that they had with them in the boat. Watch out, Jesus warned them. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. Since Jesus knew this, he said to them, Why are you discussing your lack of bread? Do you still not understand or comprehend? Do you have a hardened heart? You have eyes. Do you not see? You have ears. Do you not hear? Do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets fulls of broken pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they told him. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many baskets fulls of broken pieces did you pick up? Seven, they said. He said to them, do you still not comprehend? A couple of background pieces of information. Um, in the picture there on the screen, you have some yeast. Yeast is, is used in scripture a lot of times um, to refer to, to false teaching, especially in the New Testament. You have Matthew 16, verse 12, Galatians 5, verse 9, where that yeast refers to false teaching. You know, false teaching at, at first seems in, insignificant, like a little piece of yeast. Yet when it spreads, it has great influence, right? You think about a loaf of bread with just a little bit of yeast. If it doesn't have that yeast, it stays flat, right? But just that little bit of yeast, it just spreads and and makes that loaf rise. Here, when Jesus is talking about a hardened heart, a lot of times when you hear hardened hearts, you think unbelief. But that's not the case here. Uh, it, it's really kind of a, a dullness of understanding that Jesus is talking about. And, and you get that as he kind of goes back and forth, right? When, when he tells, uh, you know, the feeding of the 5,000 plus people, um, how many basketfuls were picked up? The feeding of the 4,000, how many basketfuls were, were picked up? Um, and, and so you have those two miracles that, that Jesus highlights there uh, as, he, as he's talking to his disciples. We live in a world, we live in a world that, that loves to say, Whatever you want to believe, that is fine, as long as you believe it's true. So I can believe that I can do anything, that I am just good enough to get to heaven, and that's good enough. That's okay, because I believe it, and and therefore it must be true. In other words, our world believes that there is no, really no absolute truth at all. Jesus here is kind of pointing them in the opposite direction, right? Here the disciples had seen these miracles. They had seen what what Jesus had done. The feeding of the 5,000 plus, the feeding of the 4,000, the basketfuls of, 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 of crumbs or food or pieces that were left over from just this small amount of food to begin with. Jesus is asking them, do you not understand? Do you not comprehend? Because they were fretting over just this one loaf of bread that they brought. You might think, well, come on, disciples. Get with the program. You should know. You should understand. You saw those miracles. And yet, don't we do the same thing? 
we have the fullness of God's word revealed to us. We have all his miracles that are recorded, laid out for us. We have what he has done clearly stated for us. And yet, what do we do? We get into these hard situations and we think we have the answer. We think that we have the better idea. We think that we can get through it on our own. We get into a bad situation. We say, why did God put me here? Instead of relying on that promise that God will work out all things for the good of those who love him. We get into that bad situation. We focus on ourselves. And, and then what do we do? We, we forget to ask God. Even though we have the promise that God is always with us. You know, we can, we can pound our hand against our head because of what the disciples were doing here. And say, why don't you understand? But we're in the same boat as them, so to speak. No pun intended. We struggle. We do those things. We fall into the same traps as the disciples did and do. But our hope, our salvation, is found in Jesus. Is found in the scripture that he has revealed to us is found at the cross and the tomb that show us and that convince us that Jesus has accomplished what he set out to do, that he has won our salvation, that he has wiped out our sins, that he has wiped out those times that we fail to trust in him and trust in his promises because he perfectly trusted in God's promises. And that gives us that confident hope that our sins are washed away and the flood of his blood, and that we have that confident hope of heaven. Yes, watch out for false teaching. Yes, watch out for your own false thinking and your own sinful nature. But rejoice that you have the victory in Jesus. We'll sing our song for the day, Lord, take my hand and lead me. There'll be a small, uh, short introduction, and then we'll join together in singing. Please sing if you're comfortable. Lord, take my hand and lead me upon life's way. Direct, protect, and feed me from day to day. Without your grace and favor, I go astray. So take my hand, O oh Savior, and lead the way. Lord, when the tempest rages, I need not fear. For you, the rock of ages, are always near. Close by your side, abiding, I fear no hope. For when your hand is guiding, in peace I go. Lord, when the shadows lengthen and night has come, I know that you will strengthen my steps toward home and nothing can impede me a blessed friend so take my hand and lead me on 
Why don't we join together in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We, 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 we thank you that you have taken away our sin, that you have uh, taken away all those times that we, we, we doubt your promises and doubt your word, and we try to rely on ourselves to, uh, to accomplish anything. Lord, help us realize that without you, we can do nothing, that, that you are everything, that, that, that you have given us the gifts and abilities to do what we do and to carry out what we carry out. Uh, we ask that you instill the confidence in your message and in your promises in us that we may be a witness to others. Dear Heavenly Father, as has been our um, prayer for months, Please spread the slow. Uh, please slow the spread of the virus as you see fit, and uh, and and please heal our nation. Heal our nation physically, emotionally, uh, physically, mentally. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Certainly, thank you for listening to today's devotion. Uh, we'll be back later in the week with a couple more devotions for you uh, to to share God's wonderful word and promises and comfort with you. God's blessings to you. We'll see you again soon.